Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. This episode of the Sports Spectrum Podcast 2019 edition with Butler men's basketball coach Laval Jordan is brought to you by Compassion International. We're so grateful to have Compassion as a partner with us here on Sports Spectrum as one of our sponsors. And for $38 a month, they provide an unbelievable way for you to make a difference in a child's life. $38 a month. Think about where $38 goes, right? And when you can think about $38 making a difference in a child's life by providing food, education, medical care, vocational training, all done in Jesus' name, that's pretty awesome. And that's what Compassion International does. For $38 a month, you release a child from poverty. Here's the website, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. Go there, look for the children available, pray about it certainly with your family, and then choose the child that you'd like to sponsor. Maybe choose multiple children that you'd like to sponsor. And that's it. Your money goes to releasing them from poverty and ultimately providing them with the number one thing that we all need, which is hope. So go to Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum and sponsor a child today. Our guest today on the podcast, Laval Jordan, a Butler men's basketball coach, joins us here on the show. Laval was named the Butler coach June 14th, 2017, but his ties to Butler go all the way back to college because that's where he played his college basketball from 1997 to 2001. And during those years in the late 90s, Butler was not the program that it is now as far as being a powerhouse in basketball. But we look at Butler now, and they're in the tournament every year. I mean, when Coach Stevens was there, they were in the Final Four and and playing in the national championship game in back-to-back seasons. And so people know Butler now as a powerhouse in many ways, as a program that's there every year in the tournament. But in 1997, when Laval got there, Butler was just trying to figure it out. And he was part of that renaissance, if you will, and building up the program and made three NCAA tournament appearances as a player. And in 2001, they won their first NCAA tournament victory in over 40 years. And I think about it now and it's like, oh, no big deal. Of course, they got to the tournament and they won a game or maybe two or more. But back in 2001, getting that first tournament victory was a big deal. And Laval was part of that. After his career ended playing basketball at Butler a couple years later, he became an assistant coach at Butler from 2003 to 2007. Then he moved over to Iowa from 2007 to 2010, also as an assistant. And it was during his time at Iowa that you'll find out in here on the podcast that he was able to rededicate his life to God. It's a pretty cool story. And then he left Iowa, went to Michigan from 2010 to 2016, made five NCAA tournament appearances, two Elite Eights, and one national championship game appearance back in 2013. Laval was an assistant then. And then he got his head coaching chance. And like I said, June 14th, 2017, was named the head coach of the Butler Bulldogs. And it's really great to have Coach Laval Jordan here on the podcast. I think you'll like this conversation. Let's get to it. Without further ado, here he is, Coach Jordan, Laval Jordan, Butler men's basketball coach on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Take a listen. Welcome, Coach. Hey, thanks for having me, Jake. It's good to talk to you, and I love your story and your journey, and you have a unique distinction of being the head coach for the team that you played with in college. Let's start and maybe go back a little bit. Do you remember the first time Butler ever came on your radar, whether it was as a player or maybe even as a kid? That's a great question. One I haven't been asked, actually. But uh, and, uh, you know what? I remember getting a letter at the, at the high school. So obviously, this was you know, 20, 21 years ago. Yeah. Um, and not knowing where Butler was at the time. So, <laughs> um, having to do some, some research and... and then obviously contact was made after that, you know, to get into the coaching staff and everything and before actually taking the official visit and coming in and to uh you know, kinda of fall in love with the place. But yeah, initially it was just a letter and then uh, I was trying to figure out where where exactly that was. I hadn't heard of Butler before. What went into the decision to attend there and to, to start, you know, playing ball there? Uh just a a family feel, you know, it's just it was just we're smaller private uh, institution and so it just felt uh you know I'm from a small town 
my hometown and, and so uh, community that's really connected and and uh together and, and and close so coming here kind of felt that same way and then there was an opportunity uh, obviously to to help the basketball program which at that point in time was uh, not where we are today but but trying to uh head in that direction and you know to come be a part of uh the groups that helps it kind of start up and get going that way yeah, you put it kind of, well, you you and your teammates, of course, and the coaches helped put that school back on the map in many ways as a powerhouse in the late 90s and early 2000s. What was that like being a part of a team that was kind of finding its way and really beginning to make that regular postseason appearances that, you know, people come to expect now from Butler? Uh, it was, uh, you look back on it, you know, it's the best, uh, people would always say hey, it's going to be the, the best four years of your life. You always remember it. Uh, now you look back on it and it, it is exactly what, uh, what people told you and you're just happy to have a, a footprint in it and, um, you know, contribute and, and, and be really proud. There's so much pride in, 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 with the guys that played before us and, and when we were here and we thought we could beat anybody, uh, you know, people would call uh, upsets and underdog. And, uh, we never liked that title. Or, and so to, to be where, where the program is now and go to find, go to two final fours, uh, with coach Stevens when he was here, uh, things that we thought were possible when we were playing, uh, we were crazy enough to think it was possible. And, and uh, so we we, we still strive to, to get back there and, and win a national championship. Butler men's basketball coach Laval Jordan joins us here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. We are a faith in sports podcast, a faith in sports ministry. So let me ask you about your faith in God and kind of where that took shape for you, started to take root for you uh, as you began your walk with the Lord. Yeah, no, it was something, um, Jason, that was always, you know, I, was, I was brought up in the, in the church, um, you know, just Sunday school on Sundays and uh, Bible studies Wednesday night. My grandmother was, uh, but I ended up living, moving in with my grandparents when they were sophomores. When I was a sophomore, and they were, you know, big into the Macedonia Baptist Church. But even before then, it was my great aunt and uncle, uh, Lodge Ridley and Jeff Jeffers, that they had me on a Sunday school bus and, and uh, at Grace Temple Church of God in Christ. And so it was something that you, it was raised with. But, but then obviously, I believe that, you know, at some point, um, you know, everybody makes their own decision. And uh, for me, it was later on to, to actually uh, get saved and give my life to the Lord, you know, further down the line. Uh, when I was working in, in assistant coach in Iowa back in 2010, uh, March, we you know, had just gotten, uh, we just gotten fired. We came from, from Butler and went to Iowa and things didn't work out as planned. And, and just searching to, to find, you know, a purpose and where to go next and what to do and and uh just kind of falling uh you know on my knees and and, and right then and there you know getting getting saved and and just giving up the steering wheel of my life to uh to jesus and and have, uh, letting him lead and, and figure out where we're going to go next and, and just had this ultimate peace uh from that point on that you know whatever happens wherever i end up i know who's in charge and i know um, that there's a purpose to what, to what I'm doing, and I just have to follow and walk faithfully. And how does that sh- – that's a great story, by the way. And I wonder how that faith now as a head coach at Butler shapes the way that you operate as a coach and how you you know, love on your players, how you coach your players, how you teach them and mold them and mentor them. How does your faith play a role in that now, maybe even before uh, when you were at Iowa and you came to Michigan after that? Uh, how does your faith play a part in how you go about coaching? Uh, it's, it's a huge part. I think just knowing that you know, we're, we're all designed to grow under uh, God's grace and, and just being uh, the, the relationship, uh, obviously being so important and, and just being that, like you said, mentor uh, to these young young men as they're growing, uh, just trying to help them grow and, having a genuine relationship with them. Uh, I think that's a, a big part of who I am uh, and, uh, and trying to take, you know, the relationship and the, some of the lessons that you learn that yeah, God teaches me and share them. Uh, I'm not necessarily forcing you know, my faith on anyone, but just to share, uh, you know, what's, what's possible and believe in something bigger than yourself and um, just get guys to maximize, you know, who they can become. Uh, and I think that's, they all have something special in us and, 
I just try to get these guys to, um, to, 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 to realize their potential. Yeah, you mentioned not forcing your faith on someone, and I love that because I don't think we should ever do that either. But we we are called not to be unashamed about our faith either. So how do you balance that? I know on your social media pages, you know, you're sharing some verses sometimes, and that's great, and sort of being open about that out there. But how do you balance that, not forcing your faith? Certainly players who may not even be Christians, it might be from another religion or another background, and that's great, and that's fine. But how do you balance that being unashamed about your faith, but not forcing it ever on anyone? Yeah, I think that's tricky, especially when you're in the uh, you know the professional world, because there's there are so many uh, t- today that there, there's restrictions placed on um, sure. you know so many times on what you can say and what you can do, and uh, you know and, you know not uh, promoting one thing over another. And, uh, I just I you know, just figure, hey, if, uh, it's what I believe in, it's who I am, and, and um, you know, to let others know, I think that's a part of that's part of what the what Christianity is is to be a witness, and so um, you know, and, and to encourage our guys to uh, believe in something, you know, to not necessarily have to believe in what, what I believe in, but you know, there there comes a time where you know the body and the, uh, even the mind may fail you, so you have to. I believe you have something to believe in that you can just draw strength from uh, when those things happen. And so, um, but there is a balance of, of publicly professing and, and things like that. So I try not to overdo it, but uh, if you don't stand for something, you fall for anything, as they say. Absolutely. A couple more questions here with Laval Jordan, the Butler men's basketball coach here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. Let me ask you this, because I know, in doing my research, and I had remembered the games when you played as a player. Uh, I'm in my 40s, so I remember watching those games in the early 2000s and even that Florida game, which I'm sure people, if they bring it up, you just shake your head like, I don't want to talk about this game because that was a difficult one to, to lose in overtime in the NCAA tournament. But I'm just leading to the point where there's a lot of games that you play, that you played in and certainly now even coached in where you've had great wins and you've had difficult losses. From a coaching perspective, where are the better lessons learned? Because everybody wants to win. Who doesn't want to win? But yet, where's the lessons learned that you can really teach and help, uh, you know, kind of shape your players through? Is it the wins or is it the losses? I think both. You know, I think it's, uh, you know, it's my view on, you know, this this whole coaching uh, profession and and what we do is as much about mentoring and being a life coach uh, as it is about, you know, being a tactician or being good with actually knows. And so I think there's, there's lessons and no different than, you know, you just teach life lessons through the sport. Uh, it's something that the guys are passionate about to play, to see the athletes. Um, and so you try to take the lessons from winning and uh, the team and the unity and that comes from community and love for each other and keep those lessons and also the, the ability to handle adversity and, uh, deal with tough, you know, tough times or tough situations in their life, but then also have an appreciation for both. Um, you know, one of our, our core values is, is thankfulness and uh, we talk about growing in victory and defeat. And so, you know, I think both of them have great lessons and you know, just keep the perspective to, to be thankful uh, at, at all times, which is, which is something that, uh, you know, you're called to do in, in the word of God also. So just to rec- have them recognize that. You know, they can contribute at a high level and there's an important synergy uh, in, in, in the game of life and in basketball. What have you found, Laval, to be the toughest lesson that you've had to learn in the game of basketball? Maybe it was as a player or maybe it's even as an assistant coach or now as a head coach. What's been a, the toughest lesson that you've had to learn through your career? Well, that's, a, that's a really good one. I think, you know, I think just being uh, finding the value in the losses. You know, especially when you're when you're playing, or you put so much work uh, as a player, as a student athlete, uh, into developing your game and, and trying to be a, a positive contributor to the team. And, um, as an assistant coach, you know you're recruiting hard, and you're you're uh, you're playing, you're, you're trying to get guys better and, and develop them, and do everything you can to mentor them, and, uh, help them mature, and obviously as a head coach, you're leading the program. And, and trying to have everybody be on the same page, and, and uh, so when you you know you lose a tough one or a couple tough ones in a row, uh, just to keep things in perspective, I think is 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 a big challenge. 
Uh, but I think it's that way with any, you know, anything that we're, we're all doing. It's, uh, we don't want anything to become an idol. Uh, that we want to make sure that God stays at the head of our lives. Uh, and so, you know, just to, to try to keep it all in perspective is, is one of the greater challenges because, uh, you're, you're so passionate about it. And you put so much time and effort into, uh, being, trying to be great and trying to strive for excellence. So, uh, I think that's something we try to preach to our guys at all times, you know, in that healthy, uh, perspective. Coach, we recently had a guy named Tommy Kyle on. I don't know if you know Tommy from the Nation of Coaches. And the idea of having a character coach on different teams to equip and serve guys like yourself and, you know, obviously the team as well. But how does a head coach like you, Laval, stay fed, stay getting poured into as opposed to you pouring into others? Because that's as the head coach, you're the guy. And yet you still have to kind of it could be spiritually, it could be emotionally, it could be. Uh, physically, but how does somebody, you know, how do you stay fed, I guess, on the Lord and just on a daily basis when you're pouring so much into other people? Yeah, that's, uh, um, you know, I, I think I, you know, me personally, just try to, the, the relationship piece, um, you know, someone told me to just, just have a board of, you know, trustees, for lack of better terms, around, you know, obviously basketball mentors, I've been, been fortunate to, uh, you know, play for Barry Collier and Thad Mata and uh, work with Brad Stevens and coach up the time Nick Blood and John Beeline. So, you know, got great basketball mentors that I could connect with and ask uh, questions to. But then also along the way to just have, a, you know, a, a, a friend group that, that are believers that I can, you know, that will kind of keep it real with me and, and uh, from a, a God perspective and life perspective and uh, to connect with uh, some people along the way uh, like Glenn Korobov, who, who's here, works with our uh, athletes in action and, and uh, mentoring program. But as he was here as the director of operations way back when I was a student athlete, you know, Bruce Dish now, you know, Men in Arbor, and you know, it's guys that I can call that are men of faith and, and pouring into others and, and just uh, vent a little bit and listen uh, and let them, you know, give me a good word here and there. Coach, it's been great having you on the program. We always ask this question as our final question, so I'll ask it to you. Where you are right now, you're in the middle of a season. We're running this in early January uh, 2019, the new year, as you get ready for uh, the grind, as they say, of college basketball and the conference play in January and February, and then hopefully the tournament in March. What are you learning from, from God right now? What has he been teaching you uh, in this season of life that you're in? You know what, I think... Uh... Just to, to 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 just value his presence, um, you know, you yell, you get into the grind, and um, you know you're you're watching film and you're getting on the court with guys and practice and workouts and you're out on the road recruiting and and uh, trying to spend as much time as you can get with your family uh, in the meantime and to just uh, you know know that God is that He's present at all times and try to. Make sure you realize that in the moment. I think that's been something that you know, I've been hearing uh, a lot recently. So just trying to make sure you take time to uh, appreciate appreciate that, recognize it, uh, maybe even share it with someone you know in those in, in those pockets where you uh, where it kind of comes to you that you know God He's here and He's present and you have that right now. He is Laval Jordan, the Butler men's basketball coach. Coach, thanks so much. Happy New Year, and I uh, really appreciate you joining us here on the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Happy New Year. And many thanks to Laval Jordan, the Butler men's basketball coach, for joining us here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. I was doing a little research, too, and I didn't, I didn't ask Laval about this, but they play their college home games at Hinkle Fieldhouse, and for college basketball fans, you probably know Hinkle Fieldhouse. It's, it's actually a national historic landmark, the sixth oldest college basketball arena in the U.S., in Indianapolis, certainly on the campus of Butler. But it's also the place where, if you know the movie Hoosiers, which I'm a big fan of, they played the national uh, high school state championship game, I guess it would have been 1954, from the movie Hoosiers in Hinkle Fieldhouse, which is pretty cool. It's just a little little you know nugget that you can take with you now that you know that when you watch Butler basketball play, especially at home, that that's actually the place where they played the uh, the game in the movie Hoosiers at the end when Jimmy Chipwood hits that game winning shot. So pretty cool little nugget there, and really appreciate Laval for being 
on the podcast. I really appreciate his faith and certainly his leadership and what he wants to instill into the men that he coaches and certainly the young men that he's mentoring and in leading not only in basketball, but in life. So keep an eye on Butler for the rest of the year, the 2019 season. And this is the best time for college hoops, man. Once January gets kicking and it's conference time and and conference matchups and then getting ready for the tournament in early March and then the big dance in the middle of March, it's a great time to watch college basketball. So again, appreciate Laval Jordan for joining us here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. We're also grateful that you listened. And I want to tell you a little something that's coming up February 3rd, 2019, and it's called Football Sunday. And if you go to a church and you're involved in your church, maybe you're a pastor, maybe you're just someone who attends, that's okay. Football Sunday is for you. And what it is, is it's a it's a resource that churches can use as a supplement to their sermon or even a sermon replacement on Super Bowl Sunday. And it's a really neat thing. It's a collection of free media resources for churches to use on Super Bowl Sunday created to introduce believers and non-believers to NFL athletes, many of whom are playing in this year's Super Bowl. And it's an evangelistic media presentation pointing unapologetically towards Jesus and displaying how these athletes are are decreasing so that the life of Christ might increase in and through them. And this year, we got stories from quarterback Kirk Cousins from the Minnesota Vikings, Case Keenum, a really powerful story with Case and his wife, in, in Case, of course, from the Denver Broncos, and linebacker Demario Davis, who plays with the New Orleans Saints, is having a career year down in New Orleans. And it's all hosted by his teammate, Saints tight end Benjamin Watson, on location in New Orleans. The Football Sunday movement has gone global, and this year promises to speak to your church and your community. And again, it's all free. Any church in the United States can use it, and it's free. It's available to you. So if you know of a church, if you're a pastor, whatever, all you got to do is go to footballsunday.com and sign up for any of the free resources that you'd like to use, potentially as a supplement or a replacement for your sermon on Sunday Super Bowl Sunday in your church. Again, the website is footballsunday.com, footballsunday.com. And listen, the Super Bowl is coming. It is coming. And you also can order a magazine that supplements the video portion of what the program's about and hand it out to all of the people that attend your church services, Super Bowl Sunday. So check it out. It's all at footballsunday.com. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time right here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Have a great rest of your day.